Hi everyone, in today's video I have an update on using legacy Firewire and Thunderbolt devices on newer computers. I've made several videos on this topic and it's amazing how much things keep changing. Several months ago I started getting comments from people saying that they bought a brand new PC and they were trying to follow my process but it didn't work. This led me to make a video about doing the process on a Windows 11 system, but after further research I found it's not about the version of Windows you're running, but rather what generation of chipset your PC uses. The TLDR of this video is that if your PC has a 9th gen or older Intel processor, my previous directions will work. If you have a 10th or 11th gen Intel processor, there is a workaround you can follow which I'll show in this video, but if you have a 12th gen or newer processor, you're probably out of luck. To find what generation processor you have, you can simply right click on the start button and choose system, or use the search and type system information. So let's first clarify a few things about Thunderbolt, USB, and Firewire. Firewire and USB are two completely different standards, and they are not compatible with one another. However, if you have Thunderbolt, you can usually use both. The most simplified method of explaining this is that Firewire sends the data directly to the processor over the PCI bus, but USB has its own chipsets in the middle. People often think they can buy an adapter to plug their Firewire devices into standard USB ports, and while there may be a few products out there that look like they can do this, they are a scam and they will not work. However, if you have Thunderbolt, legacy devices can be used since Thunderbolt technology also works by moving the data directly to the processor over the high-speed PCI bus. The issue is what happens to the data once it reaches the processor. So let's first start with what to do if you have a 9th gen or older Intel processor. You likely have a Thunderbolt 3 port, and you can simply follow the directions in my last video and everything should work as shown. You'll need three adapters, one to go from Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 1 and 2, and then another to go from Thunderbolt to Firewire 800. And then in the case of this camcorder, you'll need a cable to go from Firewire 800 to Firewire 400 with a mini plug. If you have a 10th gen or 11th gen Intel processor, you'll first need to check what version of Thunderbolt your system has. If it has Thunderbolt 3, you may be in luck and you can follow my previous directions I just mentioned. If it has Thunderbolt 4, you will also need a Thunderbolt 3 docking station. No one knows why, but Intel made a change where legacy Thunderbolt 1 and 2 devices will not work with 11th gen processors, but if you plug them into a Thunderbolt 3 device, they will. So the setup would be as follows. You connect your Thunderbolt 4 PC into a Thunderbolt 3 dock, then use the Thunderbolt 3 pass-through port to connect your Thunderbolt 1 and 2 adapter, and then Thunderbolt to Firewire 800, and then of course the Firewire 800 to 400, and now you should be good. Then Intel came out with their 12th generation of processors, and they shut down that workaround because Thunderbolt 1 and 2 data can no longer be read by 12th gen processors. This means even if you have an older Thunderbolt 2 device like a hard drive or audio interface, or of course firewire devices like this camcorder, they'll no longer work. Trust me, I've spent months researching this to find some kind of workaround, and the closest I got was a knowledge base article from this audio interface manufacturer, and they were able to get it to work by using a specific set of adapters with an 11th gen system, and I figured maybe it would still work with my brand new 12th gen PC. I followed the directions to a T. It claimed that my Thunderbolt 3 adapter from Apple was not compatible with Dell's, so I went out and purchased this adapter from StarTech. It mentioned using a Thunderbolt dock from Dell, so I got one of those as well. It then mentions that if you have the latest Thunderbolt drivers from Intel, it can cause crashing, and you should downgrade to a very specific version, so I did that. And then in the end, my setup looked pretty close to theirs, but mine did not work, and the only difference is that they are using a system with an 11th gen processor, and mine is the new 12th gen. So that pretty much confirms Intel has fully killed backwards compatibility, starting with their 12th gen processors. So if you're in this situation, what can you do? Well, here are a few options. First, you can try and find an older computer with a previous generation Intel processor, and then get the appropriate adapters for Firewire and Thunderbolt to make it work. You could also buy a Mac, as Apple switched away from Intel processors starting in 2020, and even their latest M2 processors still support Firewire even though the equivalent Intel processors drop support. Here is a chart I put together where you can determine the processor generation and the interfaces computers typically had based upon the year it was released. The second option is to find a DVD recorder with a DV input. These were sold back in the day to replace your VCR and were typically used to record cable TV before DVRs were popular. However, many of these have a Firewire 400 mini plug right on the front where you can connect your camcorder and transfer the video and burn it onto a DVD. 
You may also be able to find some devices from Sony, which were particularly made for this purpose back in the day. Just make sure the model has a DV or iLink input. When you compare Mini DV to DVD, the resolution is the same. However, Mini DV is interlaced, whereas DVDs are progressive. However, if you compare the raw bitrate of the video, Mini DV is three times higher than DVD, which means you'll be losing some quality as the compression on DVDs is higher. You can then rip the DVDs to your computer and convert the MPEG-2 to MP4, and you'll get a digital transfer, but the picture quality will be more compressed than the original. The third option is to use an analog capture device. A lot of people go this route because they are cheap and they work with standard USB ports, but I highly recommend you stay away from these devices because they will severely degrade the quality. This is because you are taking a digital signal, converting it to analog, and then capturing that analog stream and converting it back to digital again. They'll work in a pinch, but you may regret doing it this way because in the future, when you try and relive your memories, they won't look as good as the original, especially when you blow them up to a 1080p or 4K display. The final option is to use a conversion service. There are plenty of businesses that you can send your tapes to and they will convert them to DVD or an MP4 file stored on a flash drive or a cloud download, but you'll have to do your research on these companies because often they may end up using an analog capture device as well, which will lead to poor quality. And one thing you'll definitely want to do is ensure that you get your original tapes back, even if it costs extra for the return shipping. This way, if they don't provide a good quality transfer, you can always try again, whereas if they keep or discard your tapes after their capture, your memories will be lost forever. So that's it for today. I hope you found this video useful. You can help support my channel by using the affiliated Amazon links in the video description. Your price stays the same, but a small commission may come back to help all the time and effort it takes me to research and produce these videos. And if you really want to say thanks, you can send a tip using the thanks button. Of course, liking and subscribing also helps as well, and if you have any questions or ideas for future video topics, please leave them down in the comments. With that, I thank you for watching, and have a great day.